After studying the Super Mario Bros. franchise for years, it's safe to say that my most favorite parts of it are the game's levels. With me already creating several videos focusing on their ins and outs and how they can affect your overall experience. Today in particular, I want to look at the most dangerous ones in each and every game in the series. Which technically is a different category as hard, where here, the focus is on ones that you can die easily in, and not necessarily ones that give you trouble. And oh yeah, before we get started, my name is Copycat, and if you haven't yet then please subscribe to my channel, hitting that bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. The very first game in the mainline home console series is Super Mario Bros. that came out from the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985. Having a couple stages I want to look at, starting with the underwater death trap that is World 7-2. I think it's the combination of how awkward it is to move in the water, plus the tough foes you encounter in the bloobers and cheap cheeps, which makes this one so deadly, causing you to definitely lose many lives in the process, as even with a power-up, at times, this can be unavoidable. The other stage I think I should showcase is World 8-3, as there's many instances of having to get by the hammer bro enemies with little to no platforms to do so. Again, without a power up, this situation can be incredibly difficult to deal with, needing to rely on a few Koopas to clear some space, or just some pure blind luck to get through it. The second entry of the North American NES trilogy is Super Mario Bros. 2, where in my opinion the most dangerous level from it is World 4-3, an ice-based environment full of things that just want to kill you. A short list that can do this to you include having to cross an enormous gap on a bird o egg without falling into the void, traversing through a tower-like setting that has slippery platforms, spikes you can fall into, and tons of flurry foes, and finally the boss fight against the fry guy, which caused me to die many, many times over the years. This is mainly due to it splitting into four smaller parts that begin to move unpredictably, where getting touched by them at all will cause you to take damage, being the place in the game I probably ended up dying the most. The only other level I feel like I should mention by default is the final of the game in World 7-2. Although, only if you take the wrong path, as it will put you in a maze that will be almost impossible to come out of unscathed. This is due to the almost endless amounts of sparks that move very erratically in some of the tightest quarters in the title. Although, if you do choose the right path, all you really need to deal with is the Birdo, the Mass Gate, and of course, Ward. The final of the original NES trilogy is Super Mario Bros. 3. They came up for the system in 1988, where without a doubt the levels I found the most dangerous are the vehicle ones, all found within the dark lands of World 8. Here this includes the two tank based ones, a battleship one, and an airship one all being set within an auto-scrolling environment where you're bombarded by cannonballs and wrenches from the mole-like creatures that when approached cower undercover into their manholes. Also, in the airship one, it's super easy to mistime your jump and fall into the void, so you better be stocked up with lives or else you will surely get a game over. The only other level I feel like I should look at is the World 8 Mini Fortress being chocked full of the game's craziest foes that with one wrong move can cause your demise. Also, this is a maze-based environment where in many sections there are hazards like thwomps, lava and lava bubbles, rotodisks, and spikes to kill you. So you better pick the right door, as the wrong choice will set you back and potentially could cause you a lot of damage. The first of the handheld titles to feature our mustachioed hero is Super Mario Land for the Game Boy where I'd have to say the level I consistently found myself dying the most in was World 4-2. This is all due to the rotodisc section that's hard to get through, probably due to the game's rudimentary controls, where at times you're not even able to see the incoming damage. I do get this is one small area of this relatively small title, but it definitely stood out to me enough that I had to show it off for y'all. Of course, I also have to mention the vehicle-based stages where Mario's controlling a submarine and an airplane being able to fire projectiles in front of you to kill the horde of enemies you come across. There's just a lot of unpredictable factors that get in your way, that you either need to kill or skillfully avoid, being a very fun experience, although only once you get a hang of it. After playing through the SNES Super Mario World entry several dozens of times, I can safely say that the level that should be labeled as the most dangerous is Tubular, found within the special world. 
I don't think I've died more times in a singular spot in the entire series. All here because of the pea balloon power-up. Needing to use them as a way to inflate Mario, which allows him to cross big voids in this floaty-like state. However, this only lasts for a small amount of time, so you need to collect another before the last one wears off, while also needing to skillfully get around enemies and their attacks, including paratroopas, jumping piranha plants, a whole bunch of different charging chucks, and the most annoying, Volcano Lotus, making it very difficult to even complete the stage. Really, the only other level out of all the tough ones I think I should mention is Wendy's Castle of Chocolate Island, having some of the most insane dangers that you'll see in the series. In the first few sections, you need to pass through rooms chocked full of fast-moving skewers and grinders, sometimes paired together in spots that will leave you wildly intimidated. The next sections are equally as hard, as there are tons of different moving blocks that at some times you need to platform on, and sometimes you just need to stay out of the way from. All while there are little sparkies and hotheads traveling on them to add to your problems. Obviously, this all leads to a pretty tough boss fight against the Koopaling, needing to distinguish the real one from the clones, while also dodging the diagonal lava bubbles. Up next is the second handheld entry to be released in the series, in Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy, where I'd have to say the level that stands out the most as having a myriad of difficult things that can kill you is Turtle Zone 2. The biggest dangers here are the sharks and Unibo foes, which of course means that parts of the stage take place underwater, also meaning it's much harder to traverse in that environment. There are also lances that lower down from the ceiling, placed in really annoying to maneuver through spots especially in the May section, leading to many lives lost on my part. Honestly, the only other level I can mention as being truly treacherous is Mario Zone 3, being full of jagged spikes and tough things like jack-in-the-box enemies that can give you trouble at times. In one part in particular, you need to skillfully platform on a moving ball to get over the most deadly of hazards, so patience is key and don't get frustrated if you do mess up. The true Japanese sequel to the original was released for the Famicom in 1986, only coming out in Western markets in the SNES Super Mario All-Stars Collection, where from what I remember, the most dangerous level from this already very strenuous game is World C3. This is an athletic-based setting placed over several voids, where you need to use the super springs to cross all of them while having to fight the gusts of wind that can blow you off course to your death. Even if you're able to control Mario in this extreme weather situation, that last part of the stage is no cakewalk, as you have to jump between solid blocks while fire bars are trying to kill you, which is a pain to navigate if you're in a hurry. In the SNES prequel to Super Mario World, titled Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, there's three levels that can all be said to be dangerous in some way, shape, or form, starting with World 6-7, also named keep moving. A lot of this stage takes place on moving platforms over a giant void that you need to either stay on and collect goodies, or jump between to travel through the stage, usually also over fields of spikes that you can fall into and perish. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that the entire time you're being chased by a giant shark chomp while doing so, really needing to use Yoshi's skills to your advantage to stay ahead. Another level I'm sure has taken the lives of countless players is the World 5 Extra stage called Kamex Revenge. Again, taking place above a giant void in an air-based setting. This one sort of checks all the boxes. The need for pinpoint accurate platforming while you're annoyingly bombarded by eggs from the green gloves. Needing to trigger switches so you can make it to other switches as fast as you can before time runs out and you fall turning into Ski Yoshi, and having to jump between gaps as you descend down the mountainside, and finally, having to transform into Airplane Yoshi and withstand the insane egg attacks and Kamek. Lastly, I think it's pretty appropriate to look at the World 3 Extra stage, More Monkey Madness, which is all within a jungle-based setting where the ground has disappeared completely, needing to use paddle wheels to cross to the end. The monkeys here are the real pain of this level, as they climb on vines and spit watermelon seeds at you, really needing to take your time and knock them off to stay safe. The first game in the series based within the 3D realm is Super Mario 64 for the N64, 
which has a few stages I immediately think of being dangerous, starting with the Lethal Lava Land. Essentially the entirety of this course is covered in lava, with you needing to try and avoid it by any means necessary, or risk Mario burning his butt and taking some damage. One of the deadliest parts of this are the tiresome bully foes that try and body slam Mario into the liquid hot magma, always put in infuriating spots that don't make things easy for yourself. One level that's inherently dangerous as it takes place in mid-air in the sky is the Rainbow Ride Course, where in this one, one wrong move or getting burned by the flamethrowers will cause you to fall back down to earth and lose a life. It's really just that consistent risk of being able to fall so easily off of either the magic carpets or the thin platforms you have to maneuver on. Plus, the finicky camera doesn't help as at times, you're not even sure where exactly you're looking. Finally, I feel like we should look at the hard to operate in TikTok clock course. All set within a cuckoo clock that has moving parts that can give you tons of trouble. This does, however, all depend on what time the minute hand's on when you enter but by far the toughest would be either the fastest speed or when it starts to move random speeds. So you better be prepared to jump and jump quickly. The next to take place in the 3D environment is Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube. Having one main area that always gives me tons of trouble during my playthroughs in Pianta Village. This place changes drastically depending on what shine sprite you're going for with the first few focusing on burning goop that can be petrifying to move through. The goopy inferno shine in particular is rough, as you have to complete it mainly without the help of your flash liquidizer ultra dowsing device, so clearing the hazard isn't really an option in helping you go forward. Also, I lost a lot of lives during the fluff festival coin hunt shine, as you need to climb on the undersides of the stage around enemies that want to knock you off to your doom. The only other somewhat level I want to mention is the one that leads into the final boss fight against Bowser in Corona Mountain, being a lake of lava that will instantly kill you if you fall in. On top of that, you need to use your flood as a way to propel yourself on a small boat through this lake, although it's not really that simple to control and will most likely lead to you falling in several dozens of times. Nintendo would eventually return the franchise to the 2D realm with the release of new Super Mario Bros. for the dual screen system, having four distinct stages I quickly want to go through, starting with the second tower of World 8. In this one, you need to utilize the interesting snake blocks and ride them upwards through this vertical setting. Although, this is easier said than done, as they move very unpredictably and through sections with spikes and fire bars both above and below. This one really is extremely dangerous as there's no do-overs if you fall off. And the blocks move pretty quickly, so you don't have too much time to think before you might make the wrong decision. The second is an underwater base level in World 8-3, which has the monstrous Mega Unagi chasing you down, killing you if it contacts you. This sort of turns it into an auto-scroller, but with that added danger factor that's somewhat unstoppable so you just need to stay ahead of it and dodge anything else you come across. Finally, I want to look at two volcano-based stages, starting with World 8-6, that actually takes place within one, with you needing to escape it. However, this can be kind of stressful as the lava within it steadily rises, and you need to stay above it to ensure that you don't die, a challenge that makes you rush as you don't want to burn. The second of these types of volcano stages is World 8-8, where here, you have to deal with the debris from its explosion, which rains down on you and hurts you if you touch them. The Kabom foes makes this even crazier, as the debris can contact them and cause them to explode unpredictably, so I'd be very surprised if you're able to make it through this completely unscathed. Next to be released is the Space Space Super Mario Galaxy Wii Entry, where I think out of all of the tough levels in the game, the one I designate as the most dangerous is Bowser's Galaxy Reactor. There are so many diabolical parts of this final boss stage, including the section where you need to stay within the gravity spotlight or fall to your death, the lava planet that has moving pathways and lava bubbles that appear from time to time, the ice sphere that has platforms with slippery surfaces that appear in front of you, the sand planet with different types of moving platforms and gigantic fire bars, the space junk planet where you need to use the gravity walls to stay alive, and finally, the lava tower planet, which is actually terrifying as you have to traverse through a cylindrical room 
jumping between moving platforms over lava as you're shot at by endless bullet bills. This all leads to the fight against the King Koopa, which isn't that tough, but still can give you problems if you don't know what to do. As Bowser here moves fairly quickly, and his spike shell can be very deadly. The second installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came out for the Wii in 2009. Having several levels I want to mention from this one as being dangerous, so I'm just going to list each one quickly and their special qualities. The stages I want to mention are the World 7 Ghost House, where at one point you have to fall down an enormous void while avoiding a bunch of boos, the World 7 Tower, where you need to control a tilt lift via the system's Wiimote motion controls, facing off against a horde of Bob Bombs, Bullet Bills, and Bonsai Bills as you progress upwards, World 8 5, where again you need to control a platform via motion controls, but here through lakes of lava while needing to deal with the falling foes and crowbars. World 8-6, where you have to deal with slowly rising tides of lava while also having to deal with other enemies and tough platforming on your way upwards. And finally, probably the one that tops this list in World 9-7, which has many ice blocks with enemies placed inside of them, which can be melted away and revealed, which make things here really tough. The Space Base sequel, Super Mario Galaxy 2, came out for the Wii in 2010. Having one level that resulted in me dying several times, therefore, it's dangerous, in the Stone Cyclone Galaxy. It's really its speedrun star that led to the frustrating moments, as you only have 20 seconds to platform on the thin areas of the cylindrical planets, all while dodging the thwomps and annoying fast-moving tox boxes. Now, you can collect clocks to increase your time and make things much easier, but you still can't be slow, although you need to be careful in rushing, as if you fail, it will lead you into falling into a black hole many times. If I had to pick one other level, then I think the obvious that I'd have to go with is the Grandmaster Galaxy, which really is the ultimate culmination of all of the hardest parts of this title, only unlocked once you've gotten every other star in the game. Here, you have to deal with getting shot at by sentry beams, electric rails, red and blue panels, pull stars, and an annoying amount of hammer bros. Really, I'm just downplaying explaining too much of the stage as I've already talked about it a lot in past videos. But trust me, it's not something to take lightly and be prepared to rage. Nintendo would blend elements of the 3D and 2D realms with the release of Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS, where the stage I always would dread to play through is Special 8-5 as you're being chased by a cosmic clone on tough rotating platforms. This is an airship stage, meaning you really can fall to your death easily. And unfortunately, you can't really take your time as the clone will almost certainly be in your way. One stage that has an extremely high risk factor, and again, a cosmic clone, is Special 7-4, here featuring the flipping red-blue panels that more often than not are found in midair. Without a power-up, this really sucks as the flip panels flip every single time you jump, and the added pressure of the clone is just the nail in the coffin. Finally, I feel like it would be a crime not to mention the final of the game and World Special 8 Crown, especially the switchboard part, where you need to survive passing through the fuzzies, bob bombs, and a set of really annoyingly placed fire bars. Also, if you aren't being careful, then I guess the donut block section could also be tough, as those platforms disappear after being on them for just a moment. Plus, there's also fire bars there, so you can't exactly pace yourself. The third installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came out for the 3DS in 2012, having two base game levels I want to look at in the World 5 Tower and Castle. In both of these, you have to climb on fences that in some cases move vertically or horizontally while also having to not get hit or fall into the lava and fire-based elements. I don't really find this title particularly hard, but these two did at least slow me down on my way to defeating Bowser, so they're at least sort of worth talking about here. Now, there's also the Impossible Pack DLC that many fans consider being the hardest levels you can play in this entry, having three that all feature different things. In the first course, you come across a beach with an underwater section, occupied by Cheap Chomps, a Porky Puffer, and a handful of spiny Cheap Cheeps, which all move very erratically, so not taking damage here requires luck. The next part takes place in the sky, where you need to use a paddle wheel and make your way to the end, 
albeit with tons of things that want to kill you along the way. The second course is all based within an outside tower slash mountain setting, where you have to do a lot of wall jumps to make it safely. There are a few fire bars, which is the real bother here, which are put in the worst places, which of course makes things harder. The third and final course is a castle based one that has raising and lowering poison, having to make your way forward when the opportunity opens up. At times you have to jump on things like note blocks and conveyor belts while also avoiding the moving saws, flamethrowers, and myriad of enemies. So overall, just be prepared to die. The last of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came out for the Wii U, then later was re-released in deluxe version on the Switch, where really the award for the most dangerous level goes to the Superstar Road 3 Swim For Your Life course. Anytime there's an underwater level in a special world, then you know you're in for some trouble. And this one is especially bad as you're endlessly being chased by a cheap chomp the entire time. There's also the urchin spiky enemies literally littered everywhere, at times completely blocking your path, and you needing to use the gigantic fish to your advantage to clear them away. The only other one I guess I could talk about is Superstar Road 6 Firebar Cliffs being a mountain-based stage with tons of fire bars. What's interesting about this one are the giant ones that are really hard to avoid. Again, especially without a power-up to assist you. Next in line of the franchise is Super Mario 3D World that initially came out in 2013, having a couple of stages I want to look at, starting with the broken blue bully belt of World Mushroom. This is a lava environment that makes use of the arrow platforms, which rise and lower into the hazard after a short period of time. And, at times, they are pretty far away from the next piece of solid ground, so you'll surely have issues. The hardest part is definitely where you find the rotating spike rollers and jumping lava bubbles, as the arrow platforms move super fast to the point where you can't even keep up. Another stage I just really have to mention is the World Crowned Crown Champion Road, having one section within it that to this day I still have problems with, which includes dozens of dash panels and ring burners. And in that state, it's much harder to move left and right and make it to the end without taking any damage. This definitely will take some repetition to figure out, and will cause several losses of lives. The next to come out is the absolutely massive Super Mario Odyssey Nintendo Switch entry, where other than the darker sides along Journey's End, which we've looked at endlessly so I'm gonna skip it here, I want to focus on Bowser's Kingdom. This is one of the largest and most complex levels in the entire entry, absolutely filled to the brim with lava in very peculiar spaces. Also set sort of in mid-air, so you can fall off the sides to your death. In this game, however, there are no actual lives, and you just lose coins every time you die. That is, unless you want to play Luigi's Balloon World, as that's all based on the amount of coins that you have. The Bowser's Fury game mode is up next, which was bundled alongside the re-release of Super Mario 3D World for the Switch, having two areas within it that I'm going to showcase, starting with the Rolling Roller Isle. This entire apparatus is just made up of rolling platforms that at times even have lava on them, which makes them very dangerous. And on top of that, it's entirely placed over a lake of lava, meaning there's several ways to die here whichever mistake you end up making. The other that has hazards that can lead to you dying is Mount Magmeow, which you need to scale upwards to find all of the cat shines, all while avoiding a plethora of things. This can be getting through sections with fire bars and fire bros, where at times you need to use a switchboard to traverse forward, scaling the side of the mountain on a thin platform where you need to move very slowly, taking another set of switchboards, but this time over crazy amounts of magma and stacked fire bars that are almost unavoidable, and finally, getting to the top of the mountain by skillfully triggering a switch so that your board can reach the pipe cannon. The final of this video, and most recent to come out in the series, is Super Mario Bros. Wonder for the Nintendo Switch, where out of all of the craziness, the only level I really want to look at is the final one you can unlock in the game, in Special World's Final Final Test Badge Marathon. This is one of the hardest 2D platforming Mario challenges ever, with very little in terms of checkpoints, so if you do die, you have to repeat the same grueling sections over and over. The hardest parts of this one are 
having you use the parachute badge to float downwards while dodging the sugar stars and triggering the wow buds to lower the poison, using the floating high jump badge to jump and ground pound the accordion list to move forward, using the dolphin kick badge to propel yourself faster underwater to get through the deadly electricity, using the crouching high jump badge while using zip tracks where one wrong move will put you into the spikes, using the wall jump badge to outrun the poison while needing to jump off of the seeds spit from the piranha plants which is a pinpoint accurate thing, using the spring feet badge to jump over rapidly moving fire bars, using the jet run badge to run off of platforms and then use it to jump to cross some vast voids, using the boosting spin jump to prevent yourself from falling into those vast voids, using the grappling vine badge to latch yourself onto walls, but be careful as many of them are also hot hot rocks, and finally using the invisibility badge, where obviously you can't see our mustachioed hero, so performing insanely tight maneuvers becomes a nightmare. Alright that's gonna be it for today's video guys, I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did please leave a like, comment below what you thought about it, and of course subscribe to my channel. Also please go follow my Instagram at copycatgamer, there I upload some cool clips and items from my collection that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys all have a good day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye! Thank you.